I'm Melissa Chartrand. I'm here at the beautiful historic Geyer Barn on the High Arts campus of Pearl and South Street, but we're actually going to be talking about shanties today. I have mm -hmm. two of our shanty artists joining me for our shanty spotlight, Pat mm -hmm. Kelly of Kellamix Studio mm -hmm. Ceramics and Ann Hansen, a wonderful metalsmith. You've been a part oh. of the shanty program for a few mm -hmm. years, and I'm excited mm -hmm. to talk to you uh, mm -hmm. about your work, how you mm -hmm. met, mm -hmm. all those fun things. Mm -hmm. I do want to give a brief mention about the barn. It's just been renovated and we have classes mm -hmm. and workshops and so on and mm -hmm. what I didn't know Pat is that you were part of the very beginning of yes. the barn which is so neat yes. to hear the story. Yes, uh, in 1989 Shirley Flynn, Lucille Malali and myself we were contemplating a place to have an artist gallery within the uh, town of within the town here and we came over and we looked in this window in this old building and there were boats and old just old things stored in here and uh, Shirley said oh my wouldn't this make a great gallery for the town so um, the wheels started turning and we did get get it together you did it. And Look at all these years later scraped the paint off the floor and painted all the walls and yeah it just turned out really great yeah, yeah. so it's yeah. nice to have you back in here and hopefully then yeah. in the future you can come back for some workshops and yeah. classes and yeah. so on yeah and we most great. definitely will do another exploration I think a, a video of another time mm -hmm. uh, to go absolutely into the yeah but let's talk about you and how mm -hmm. you ended up here on the Cape and, and the work that you do. Well, in uh, 1982, I came out of Western Pennsylvania. I had just came out of graduate school. And I just wanted to relocate and find a new place to live and to work. And I thought Boston was under a renaissance. I thought, oh, I'm going to go to Boston. But along the way, I stopped at Cape Cod just to tour it and just to look around, and I found there were many artists here. So I thought this might be a great place to work. So I did. I, I found um, a job in a pottery company here, and I thought, and that was my uh, my study in uh, graduate school and undergraduate school. So I decided to stay, and I've never looked back, and I love it. Wonderful. And mm -hmm. Anne, how about you? Uh, I came here in 1994 with my husband. And um, I went to school at the uh, Museum School of Fine Arts Boston in mm -hmm. UMass Dartmouth um, to study metalsmithing. And um, kind of the same reasons. I, it was, I knew it was art friendly and a good place to um, create my work and be able to sell it. And um, the shanties have certainly turned into a nice gig for us. Right. Well, you mentioned mm -hmm. also that you had not been from the Cape, but actually were here for high school, yep. moved away, and then when you came back, you picked up this, it, it's, this metalsmithing was something you did a little later in life, not mm -hmm. right out of school, mm -hmm. um, which I think is so fascinating. And you went to one class and said, this is it, and then pursued it from there. Yes. And it was interesting that you picked metalsmithing, and Julia is the first thing to look into. Was there... Well, I was always pretty good with fine motor coordination. Nation. And um, mm -hmm. even right now, I work for um, a gentleman that uh, modifies uh, recording microphones. Mm -hmm. um, so I've just always been good with fine motor skill. And mm -hmm. But as far as the metal goes, I just really enjoy watching it move and being able to form it to different shapes that I like. Mm -hmm. and, and let's segue right into that with the process of what you do, the types of metals and, and items that you work with. Yeah, I work primarily uh, mostly in mixed metals, a little bit in gold. Um, I like texture, so my thing is um, I like to do a lot of, um, I do my own acid etches mm -hmm. on metals, and then um, I have a roller mill at home, and I can uh, press the um, textures that I've made into different metals, and um, then I take that metal, and I'll form it into bracelets or necklaces. Um, I'll either leave it shiny. I use a lot of um, different patinas uh, to create color on the metal. And um, that's about it. <laughs> now, do you sketch out first, or it just comes to you as um, you're working with it? Um, a little bit of both. Um, I have a sketchbook, and I, have, I probably have about 500 of them at home. I, I always have a little sketch book mm -hmm. going on. I carry one in my pocketbook. And, um, mm -hmm. Um, I'm not or at 2 a.m. you wake up. Yeah. <laughs> have a design. I just, it might come to yeah, you. Yeah, I just kind of, even if it's just doodles, I use it as like a to-do list too. Mm -hmm. I just kind of use that book as mm -hmm. 
all my creative and even pay the water bill goes in. Sure, there. <laughs> sure. And now, Pat, then, I, you know, you also work with your hands. And oh, yes. And obviously texture with the type of ceramic work that you do. Let's, yes. let's talk about that. Uh, okay, I work in porcelain and stoneware. I love the texture of the porcelain. It's smooth. It's like butter to work with. And the stoneware, um, it's a little bit more coarse, and that's actually the clay that I was raised on. Uh, in school, we always worked in stoneware. And um, anyway, I roll the clay by hand on canvas with a rolling pin. It's very basic. And you actually um, make the clay yourself. I do. Oh. I make the clay, yeah. Is that a, that's, how long does that take? Is it? Well, it has to be aged. I start with a powder. I mix different um, chemicals together, um, kaolin, nephilim cyanide, silica, and a few other things. And then uh, it's mixed with water, and it's aged in a barrel for maybe two or three weeks. And then it's wow. laid out on a plaster bat to dry a little bit, and then it's wedged, and then it's almost ready to use. It still needs to be aged a little bit more. So yeah. it's a long process. Um, I know people will ask me, how long did it take you to make that piece? And uh, when I get started, I mean, in telling them how long it takes, it's usually about six to eight weeks. And um, anyway, the, uh, I like textures in clay. I'm pressing burlap, sometimes cotton cloth. Sometimes I go outside with my clay and press the clay into tree bark, uh, into the pine tree, sometimes cedar tree. Um, and it's just really wonderful texture. And then uh, when I started as an artist, I was a painter. So I feel it's very important to bring all those colors into the clay also. So I mix all my own glazes and, um, and I have some nice teals, blues, off-whites, uh, earthy colors. And I try to use many colors and layering and layer and layer and layer of different glazes to get different uh, effects in the end. And then I fire in the electric kiln uh, bisque fire and then a glaze fire, which takes about eight to 10 hours. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So it's a long process and uh, you become very close with the material and the mm, process. Absolutely, mm -hmm. a yeah. lot goes into that. Yeah. And same mm -hmm. for you, Pat, when you're mm -hmm. working on it and you say you see these different areas to get the texture. Mm -hmm. Does the pieces just come to you, or do you have in mind what you're starting with? I do have in mind somewhat, but uh, working in clay is, it, you never know until the final piece comes out of the kiln as to what you actually have. But mm -hmm. I almost have an idea, and that idea, and that I, I like to use intuition a lot and, and just put all of that into it. And then in the end, sometimes good, sometimes not so good. But um, I usually put the piece out, and somebody comes along and thinks it's beautiful, yeah, and I go, Yeah, it speaks to them. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yes. And I think that's what I love about our viewers, hopefully hearing this, is that that's what's so special about this program, the shanties, mm. and meeting oh, yes. the artists, and really mm -hmm. what goes into When we say it's unique and one of a kind, that mm -hmm. they really can mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. what's been involved and a little bit of mm -hmm. you in each and every piece. And I'm sure that's it's right. rewarding when somebody does pick up a piece that speaks to them. And very mm -hmm. much so. And then has mm -hmm. it to share. Mm -hmm. Let's just briefly talk about the two of you and how you met. And again, in the shanties, you share the space. And I think the mm -hmm. work complements each other so well. Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. And we've done it for, what, probably about three or four years now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, at least, yeah. Um, and we met through the Artisans Guild and the Society of Cape Cod Craftsmen. And uh, and what, you were secretary a couple times. And we always... Would, seem to step forward and take on jobs within these groups. And, uh, but anyway, we met and worked together there and uh, then decided, gee. Yeah, just one uh, <laughs> meeting we were talking about it. And uh, we should try the shanty. Yeah. 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 And work it's together. It's worked out nicely, yeah. It has, very much so. And, yeah. and the Great. fact you both work with your, your hands and the uh -huh. styles, have you influenced each other within your work? Even though it's so different, there are, to me, it sounds similarities. I'm going to say no. <laughs> well, I think just the, just the fact that we both deal with textures. I know I'm and always hands. looking. Right, I'm always looking at the texture in Anne's work, thinking maybe I could get that into clay. Well, maybe I am somehow. At the texture in yours. Yeah, so. right. So there's always something. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Thanks for sharing a bit about yourselves and thank the you for process. Having us. Thank you for Anne having Hansen us. and Pat Kelly. Mm -hmm. uh, for I'm Melissa Chartrand, wishing you an artful day.